Hi, I'm Melvin Way, and I'm going to be doing a mini-series about growing potatoes. So here we have a sweet potato, and normally they're sort of, you know, elongated, uh, oblong or whatever, but this one, I purposely chose one that would have the same shape as the russet and gold potatoes. So I'm also doing many other series. Um, check it out on YouTube, on my channel. And I'm basically going to wash this and soak it in water for a day in the sunshine and see what happens. So here's a closer look at the surface. And you know as compared to the other potato types it's actually a little harder for me to tell what the origins would be for the shoot ape colmera stems. You know um, I don't really know where the buds would come out of just by looking at this but I think with a bit of sunshine and water we'll find out soon enough so stay tuned so here's what I've done with this sweet potato I put it in a nice glass uh, full of distilled water I rinsed this thing off with cold water very thoroughly and kinda of sprayed it off with some more water and then I put it in you know water that's as clean as possible I know the surface of the potato still probably contains a lot of pathogens in and of itself but you know, I don't want to use dirty tap water that's all hard and contains a lot more pathogens. Then, uh, so we'll just give this thing a fresh start and put it in the sun. Uh, I used a clear vessel so sunlight could get through and illuminate the entire potato. And hopefully that'll speed up the germination process and help warm this thing up. Okay, so I'm going to call this day zero for all three of my potato projects. And, you know... This is my balcony. It has west facing sun. It's dusk now. So when the sun hits these uh, solar reflectors I made out of cardboard and aluminum, it reflects a lot of the sun back onto these uh, plants, all these plant projects that I have going on. And I also put aluminum foil at the bottom of this uh, glass tray that I have for these three incubating potatoes. So they'll get the maximum amount of light from as many angles as possible. I don't get all that many hours of sunlight um, from this balcony in March so just two hours of sunlight a day comes in so I have to make sure I capture as much light and reflect as much light as possible okay it's day one so I bought this self-watering uh, auto riego there means self-watering in Spanish a uh, 15 inch or a 38.1 centimeter diameter plant spa so this is a very new thing to me. I've already deployed it in two other experiments and I think what's good about this is basically if you look at the diagram you pour water into this hole here and the water ends up here. So when you fill up this tray with water basically it'll come here. It won't pour into this but I think it'll come in here not sure but anyway if you fill this up with soil uh, water vapor will come through these vents but based on what I experienced based on my ginger germination experiment all the water in the tray disappeared within the first 24 hours and I think that's only possible if water comes in through these four holes and soaks dirt directly from the bottom but I was under the impression that this self-watering plant spa uh, essentially is sort of like a water distiller it's a water vapor comes out of these vents and the soil mostly doesn't get through it's packed on top of these slits and it absorbs the moisture especially when the sun heats the pot during the day and thus heats the water in that tray here so this is a pretty big pot and I'm planning to fill it not quite full but full enough so I can uh, plant my potatoes and later on uh, make additional moves as necessary. I heard that if you continue to apply soil on top and bury the stems of potato plants it can generate more and more potatoes later on. Um, so that's the strategy I'm going to try. So we're going to do a simple test. I'm going to pour water into the lip of the tray and we'll see where the water comes out of, if any. 
So water definitely did come in through those four holes that I pointed out. So if you put really dry soil and fill the entire tub or pot, then it basically wicks away all that water from the bottom. So you'll have an empty tray within 24 hours. So I'll be conducting three simultaneous experiments with the gold potato, the russet potato, and the sweet potato. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to water by this lip. And since there's only about 15 centimeters of soil deep from the bottom, um, this should have no problem watering all of the soil and providing the potatoes with the germination moisture that they need. Okay, so it's not quite full, and I'm gonna go get some more water. So the water level is pretty high. It's maybe only a two centimeters away from the cusp of this lip here and I think that's more than enough to water all this soil. It's not much soil at all. So within a few hours I expect this water level to decline appreciably. In fact I think it's starting to decline now. If you look at it you can kind of see the water receding. So it's being absorbed into the bottom of the soil and you know this should provide all the moisture the potatoes need. I decided to do this instead of letting them soak in full water for several days as some people do because this is what I deem to be a more natural course of action. It provides aeration for the potato tubers. So one thing this setup ensures over the previous setup which is just incubating these in water and sunlight is that you know all parts of these tubers can get aeration. I was kind of worried that Maybe the parts that were completely immersed in water wouldn't get enough oxygen and carbon dioxide to do what they need to do and develop. They can't respirate nor, they, nor can they photosynthesize. Okay, it's day four of the potato germination experiment. So there's still some water in this self-watering plant spa pot. Okay, it's day four of this sweet potato germination experiment. And you know what? I can't really see any signs of bud activity. So this might be the slowest one of the three to develop. And the ground is bone dry, but that doesn't mean the soil underneath isn't wet because I filled up the watering tray for the self-watering pot on day one and it's been 72 hours and it's almost dry. So that water, almost all of it soaked up into the soil. So I'm going to fill up that water tray and spray the surface of this sweet potato with some more water and see if that triggers anything. Okay, it's day 15 of this potato germination experiment. So I'm going to cover all the dirt here in a thin layer of sand to prevent fungus gnats from gaining a foothold. I also see a lot of springtail activity. I basically don't want bugs to overrun this experiment. But of course with three potatoes in a pot like I can't really expect much otherwise. At some point, something is going to try to eat them, raw or not. Okay, it's day 19 of this sweet potato germination experiment. And as you can see, there's a nascent bud just coming out of the ground. And that sort of makes sense. Uh, you can also see a bunch of springtails running around all over the potato and the bud. And Basically, yeah, bugs are a problem, and I've put some sand into this pot, but not a whole lot to fill in all the cracks. Um, there's another bud. So, let's see. I think that about covers it. I mean, that could be one there, but... No, that's pretty much all the surface activity we could see. So, I purposely left 
the top halves of these potatoes exposed because I wanted to be able to witness any kind of activity such as that. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that and how it develops. But um, that's a pretty promising development and it makes more sense that the bud should come from the bottom because that's where all the water is. The tops of these potatoes keep drying out. So I didn't really expect the sweet potato to be the first one to germinate. The gold potato had, you know, green shoots first. And green is the easiest color to detect against the yellow background, I would say. But, uh, you know, there's also a little bit of green here if you're looking uh, through the camera. It's kind of hard to see with the naked eye, but on this russet potato. But development in that has been really slow. It seems to have been uh, shriveled up or cannibalized itself a little more than the other two. So there's a lot of fungus gnats uh, also buzzing around. You know, there's one right there. And I'll definitely have to deal with them. I could try killing some of them manually. There's been a lot of fungus gnats. The springtails I'm not too worried about. But the gnats, you know, they might try to lay larvae. And so I should definitely lay down more sand. And the way I envision this working is as there's a... Um, more growth and the shoots finally start you know rocketing skywards I'll basically you know scoop up the sand and lay down more potting mix and just keep maintaining a layer of sand on the very top to prevent entry from bugs and I haven't done a really good job here it's been really half-hearted but uh, it seems to have done something you know these uh, fungus gnats have a really hard time burrowing into uh, sandy surfaces to try to lay their eggs so they're just kind of being annoying and buzzing all around the surface as you can see right there. So in a very short minute I just used a piece of packaging tape and I captured five of these fungus gnats. They're not very hard to capture when you have these giant potato surfaces and all this pot surface area to just you know gently stick them with the tape. So I'm practicing just some manual pest control because I'm seeing way too many of these little buggers.